love you. Lord, I love Come on. You. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More than anything. More than anything. Are you singing out there? Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I place the one above you. Place the one above you. Oh, Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord. 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 I love you, Come on, let's dance in his presence. Let's sing in his presence. Come on, everybody sing. Lord, I praise you. 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 More than anything. More than anything. Come on, sing. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. I lift my hands and praise you. Oh Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise more than you. anything. More than anything. Say, I love you, Lord. 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 More than anything. More than anything. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord.
hands in the air. Give that wave right there. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, prepare the atmosphere. You can do better than that. If that was for me, it would be all right. But come on, to the most high, to your covering, to your protector, to your deliverer. He woke you up this morning. Come on and wave that hand. Prepare this atmosphere. How many of you know that the Lord is your life? The Lord is our salvation. Whom shall I feed? What shall I feed? Come on and help me sing. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Come on and help me say, The Lord is my life salvation. Who? Whom shall I be? Come on. Whom shall I be afraid? Come on, lift your voice. The Lord is my life salvation. Whom shall I be? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. in you Lord I will trust in you yeah yeah come on and say I will trust in you the Lord come on the Lord is my life salvation who who shall I be who shall I be afraid Lift your voice. Whom shall I be? I will wait. Oh, yes, I will. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. Oh, come on and let him know. I will trust in you. I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on and help me say, I will remain confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord is my life salvation. Who? Who shall I be? your hands together in this place. Now if you know God is your deliverer, he's your
hope on you. We say I hope on your love. We say I hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. We say I hope. We say I hope on you. We say I hope on you. of the Lord. Yeah. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Ooh, hallelujah. Woo. Now if that ain't a sermon all by itself, praise the Lord. I believe that. I, I believe that. I mean, hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> yes. You are. Yes. One more word. We One said more word. I hope. We said I hope for you. We said I hope for oh, your love. Thank you, praise team. Turn in your Bibles to Haggai chapter 1. Haggai chapter 1. We want to welcome all of you that are streaming live. Yesterday I ministered on Faith or Fear, Where Are You? You need to get that CD. It'll be a real blessing to you. And we found out that in the midst of a storm, there was a sleeping Jesus on a sinking boat. He was cool, calm, and collected. And uh, next week we're going to lift off with that and be ministering along those lines. We talked about how to overcome fear, how to recognize it. And one of the greatest fears of this day that we're finding out is this fear of, of shortage lack. Will I have enough? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another privilege and opportunity to gather around your word. We thank you it's your word that gives us life. It gives us victory in every area of our lives. So once again, we do look reverently to your word to behold the wondrous things out of thy law. I'm asking on today to anoint every ear to hear and every heart to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You have your Bibles, go to Haggai. Haggai who? Haggai 
or go to the table of contents and look the page number up. Haggai chapter 1 and also 1 Chronicles 29. Again, Angela, we are so glad to have you today. Give her a hand clap. Angela, boy, I tell you, now, now we ain't, you know, we ain't hugging and kissing and shaking hands today, but, but want you to know we love you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Haggai chapter 1, 1 Chronicles 29. Haggai chapter 1, 1 Chronicles 29. Did I already pray? I did, Darren. I was just checking on y'all, see if y'all with me. All right, I did already pray. So we're continuing, and we'll finish it up today, a, a message entitled Money Makes a Difference. We're looking at God's system. Now, we've learned, we've learned that there are two ways to prosper, two ways, there, and there are two systems. Say two systems. There are two systems of acquiring, managing, utilizing, and investing money or material resources. There is, right now in existence, and you're operating in either one of these, that is, number one, the world system, and then there is God's system. A system, we said, is an organized or established method or way of doing things. And we found out, according to Psalm 73, verse 12, that the ungodly prosper through the world system. But I want you to get out of this world system because there are several things we listed that's wrong with the world system. Number one, we said, we answered the question, what's wrong with the world system? Number one, we found out that, tell somebody he's reviewing. We found out that Satan is the ruler, the head, the leader of this world system. And the devil hates us. First Peter 5, 8 says he's our adversary. There is a real devil and he hates you and he hates me. And, 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 and his system is, will, is not designed for Christians to get ahead. It's not designed for, for anyone, any minorities to get ahead. It's not designed for the poor to get ahead. It's designed, the world system is designed to keep you at the grindstone of life. Bear, keeping your one nostril above water, right? Because the world system, the, it, it, the, it takes on the nature of the person. And the nature of the devil is he's hateful, he's evil. And he's an oppressor. And he wants to keep you down. Amen. Barely making it, barely get. And, and, and watch this. The world system, we said, secondly, is built on deception it demands compromise, and it leads to sorrow. And then we began to talk about the third thing about the world system. What's wrong with it is that it's what? It's full of injustices and equalities. We read a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King. Many of us are very familiar with Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. But we don't, we don't read all of it. <laughs> And when they teach it and they put it out, they don't tell you the whole speech and how he began the speech. So I just want, I want to reiterate, my reader's going to read a portion, a quote. We read it last time, but I want you to hear, because in his latter years, Dr. King pushed for economic rights. Dr. King understood that if I can go into any restaurant or hotel, that's one thing, but I got to pay when I go. So if I ain't got the money, you're still keeping me out. And so he began to target this thing. Listen at this very carefully. You go into Haggai if you ain't found it yet. Go ahead. And so we've come here today to dramatize a shameful condition. In a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check. A check which has come back marked insufficient funds. 
But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. So we've come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. Yes, so he was talking about, especially in his latter years, because he understood that this world system is not, it does not favor minorities, does not favor the poor, it does not favor, it, it does not favor Christians. And so we have to divorce ourselves from this world system that's being lorded over by the devil. When you look at the statistics, people of color in America, we've been locked into a no-win, lower status system. This system is not designed. Even after the Civil War, 1864, uh, after the Civil War, General Sherman issued a special field order number 15. Special field order number 15 promised every ex-slave 40 acres and a mule. And they never got it. I'm still waiting. Okay, so, so, so this world system and why we ought to march for our rights and we ought to petition and we ought to vote and we ought to do everything we can because I believe reparations are old people of color. I understand all of that, but I can't wait for that. Listen to me. I'm telling you this world system, listen, is a system that is not designed for you or I Christians to get ahead. But God, say but God. Here's the good news. Here's the good, and we need some good news in these. Oh my, the good news is that the bad news was wrong. I got the good news. The good news is the gospel. That's why we value the word. That's why although our numbers are low, so to speak, because of what's going on, we still come out. And if we gotta go to two services, and if we gotta stream live, we value the word of God because the gospel, the preached gospel, is the deliverance for anybody. Amen. Because God's system, and I love it, the Bible said in Acts 10, verse 34 and 35, that God's system is free of prejudice. It's free of racial prejudice. God's plan will prosper anyone, anywhere. It has no walls, no ceilings, and no boundaries. Thank God for God's system. And yes, people are concerned. In fact, I read it on yesterday. Listen at this. A recent, a recent USA Today poll, Brother Jones, found that Americans are more worried about finances than their own health. Yeah, right now. More worried, concerned. They, they, they are concerned, uh, more concerned about the economy and the stock market and their personal financial ability and whether or not they're going to get another paycheck because if many don't work, they don't get paid. And, and, and we know the greatest enemy to your success is, in life is fear, and we'll deal with that. But we, there's a system out here. Even, even some of the stimulus packages that some of the people that are in government that are coming up with, these packages, uh, they're giving the, the least amount to the poor. Because the system is designed not for you to get ahead. The world system is lorded. The Satan is the ruler of it. And he is a hateful somebody. <laughs> Amen. But God got a system. So let's talk about it. Listen at this. My opening statement that's going to guide the rest of this lesson. I got 19 minutes is this. God's system of prosperity, Luther. God's system of prosperity is designed by God. God came up with this one. See, see, see God's system, Proverbs 10, says, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he add no sorrow with it. We already talked about that. When, with God's way, you, you can still have your priorities in order. You can still seek God first and, 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 and have a wonderful marriage. That's your spouse. And, and, and be, spend time with your children and go to games and that kind of thing under God's system. You ain't got to sacrifice your relationship with God, your relationship with your spouse, or your relationship with your children. God's system of prosperity is designed by God. And I'm talking about a God that's in love with you. I said it on yesterday that perfect love casts out fear. If you get an understanding of how much God loves you and meditate on his love, God ain't going to let you fail. He ain't going to let you go down. He got your back. God's system of prosperity is designed by God to both finance, watch this, to both finance God's work in the earth, that's number one, and, say and, and. 
and to prosper the believer. That's what that's what God's system is designed to do. It's designed, number one, to finance God's work in the earth, to finance God's work in the earth. In other words, when you participate in God's system, you don't have to worry because God is a covenant keeping God and his word will work for whosoever and you are whosoever. God's system is that you and I have a heart, have a heart to put his kingdom first. The, the Bible says, and many of you know this verse, it says, seek ye first the, see what I tell you, seek, kingdom of, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You can seek other stuff second, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, other things will be added unto you. The key to supernatural prosperity is having a heart to put the kingdom of God first in your life, to be a paymaster for the kingdom of almighty God. Seeking first the kingdom of God does not mean a lot of stuff that people think it means. If you keep it in the context, seeking first the kingdom of God, listen at this, it means to give, it means to, give to God's work first before you take care of yourself. Don't take care of yourself and then give God a tip. That is not, see, you have to ask yourself the question, what right now, what is your financial priority? Is it the kingdom or are you trying to take care of you? And God already told you he'll take care of you. He got your back. That when the dust settles and you come out of you're going you're gonna to be standing strong. If your first thought is to pay your bills and whatever is left you give to God, then you're not seeking first his kingdom. What you got to do, and I know this is a mind renewal. This is a whole different perspective. You got to get the focus off of you and on the kingdom. I, I, I challenge you to relocate yourself because God's kingdom first. Say the kingdom of God, kingdom of God. must be first. And, and really, watch this. Go, go with me if you would. You in Haggai? Look at chapter number one. Now, Haggai chapter number two, you read it for homework. God said, God tell you, he, listen, I'm telling you, <laughs> your, your Bible, uh, your newspaper, is, it was in your Bible before it was in your newspaper. Because in, in Haggai chapter 2, God said, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth. I'm going to shake all of the, fi- the, the people that, things that put people, have, people have made idols of. I'm shaking all that stuff up because I'm working on something. But watch this, Haggai chapter uh, number 1. Now, Haggai chapter 1, verse 2, we see here that the people of God were putting God last on the back burner, trying to take care of themselves, trying to take care of themselves. If that don't describe a lot of believers. And they were delaying God's work until later on. They were too busy looking out for themselves. But look at what God said. Haggai 1 verse 2. Thus speaks the Lord of hosts saying, the people said the time has not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled or nice houses? And this temple be lie in ruins. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, do what? That word consider your ways means your, your course of action, methods, manners, conduct, behavior, or lifestyle. So God says, consider your way. Look at verse 6. You have sown much and bring in little. Now, that goes against spiritual principle. He says, you eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, watch this. You're working every day and barely making it. Why? And he who earns wages, earns wages to put it into a bag with holes. No savings, no margin, no room for emergencies. He said you open the door for the devourer to bring destruction in your life. When you, when you, when you, when really, because you ain't trusting me, God says, in this area. And in the natural, really, you're one germ away from poverty. How dare you put your trust in the world system when I got a system for you and you, my child, I'm, you're not an orphan. I, God said, I'll never be guilty of non-support. I'll take, I, I take care of what's mine. But they got, they got, in, they got in the fear and, they, and, they, and so now they, they're working every day, barely making it. Because whenever you put yourself before God, eventually you're going to struggle. He says in verse 7, watch this. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. 
Evaluate what you're doing. Come on now. Is what you're doing working? You know, Dr. Phil, how that's working for you? He says, go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much. And indeed, it came to little. And when you brought your check home and when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins while every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew and the earth withholds its fruit. For I call for a drought on the land and the mountain and on the grain and the new wine and all and whatever the ground brings forth on many lives and on all the and, and on all the labor of your hands. Yeah, you got a dry season. You feel an overwhelmed with debt. And God says you will not because you will not put me first. The Amplified Bible verse two says 18 years had gone by and they still hadn't did, did it God's way. They still wouldn't, it, you know, partial obedience is disobedience. And, and, and 18 years had gone by and they were taking care of themselves and ignoring God. Amen. Yes, I'm a prosperity preacher. I make no apologies, but I want you to prosper with priorities. Do it God's way. Everybody say God's way. Look at 1 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 29. God's system of prosperity is designed by God to both finance God's work in the earth. You have to have a heart. See, giving, we're going to see, is a heart matter. Yeah, it's a heart matter. Notice uh, 1 Chronicles 29, verse 1. 1 Chronicles 29 and verse 1. You know, David had some issues. But even with his issues, one thing about him, you know the man had was a, his heart was right he, because he was a big giver. Matthew 6, 21 says that where your money is, where your treasure is, you can't fool God. There will your heart be also. All we got to do is check. Listen, check your giving. Because listen, whatever you love, you're going to give into. If you really love her, bro, you're going to give to her. Ladies, you can always tell whether a man lusting you or really loving you. If he ain't never giving you nothing, you're doing all the giving, he don't love you. Okay, all right, I'm going to go back here. Okay, that's all right, though. <laughs> and vice versa. First Chronicles 29 says, furthermore, King David, he was a radical, said to the assembly, my son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the work is great because the temple is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now, for, look at verse 2. Now, now, for the house of my God, I prepare with all my might, gold for things of gold, made of silver, silver for things of silver. He said, I got ready. And then verse 3, notice what David said. Moreover, because I've set my affection on the house of my God, I have given, circle I've given, I've given to the house of my God, what? Over and above, over and above, over and above, over and above. We give over and above our regular tithes. We give over and above. We live a lifestyle. I believe giving should be a lifestyle, not just an event. He said, all that I prepared for the holy house, my own special treasure of gold. So he gave, and then verse 3 says, the leaders, verse 6, excuse me, verse 6 says, then the leaders of the father's house, the leaders of tribe, they gave. Then verse 7 said, they gave for the work of the house of God. Everybody was given. Nobody was pulling teeth and nobody was mad. Because verse 9 says, then the people rejoiced for they had offered willingly because with a loyal heart. It's a heart matter. They had offered willingly to the Lord and King David also rejoiced greatly. Some people said David gave would be equivalent to $29 billion in gold and $6 billion in silver. Don't tell me he didn't love God. David stood up before the congregation publicly and gave his gift. I keep telling folks, all the, the giving in the Old Testament was never private. All of it was public because you, you couldn't put a dove in an envelope or you sacrifice something. Tell somebody it was all public. In fact, jot down Acts 5, Acts 5, verse 1 and 2. They, we knew what Ananias Sapphira and his wife gave because they did it publicly. And then Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 70. Nehemiah chapter 7, beginning at verse 70, they listed what they gave. Amen. So now watch this. We see here, God, say God's system. God's system. God's system. The good news is, saints, that now that we're born again, 
Not only are we redeemed from poverty, but we are also redeemed from the system that facilitates it. The world system is designed to keep black folk, white folk, red folk, yellow folk down. It, the, the whole system is to make the rich richer and the poor poor. It's designed to keep black folk subordinate and everybody else. That, 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 in other words, God's system. Tell somebody to trust the system. And here it is. And this is what people don't like about God's system. Most people ain't against financial prosperity. They're doing everything they can out there. Working three and four jobs, overtime, under. They're doing everything. Hook or crook sometimes. But watch this. So they don't mind. They ain't giving up no bonuses and raises. They, they want to prosper. But they don't like God's way. And here's why. Here is God's system of prosperity is based on the law of giving and receiving. Now, I'm telling you right now, according to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, the Bible said God raises up the poor and lifts up the beggar. You ain't got to be a beggar or a borrower if you do it God's way. But God's system, it's not overnight. It's the law of growth. But God's system, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear, God's system is based on the law of giving and receiving. That's Philippians 4.15. It talks about Philippians 4.15 says concerning giving and receiving, concerning giving and receiving. And notice what comes first. Giving comes before receiving. And maybe you're trying to get it another way on your own. Your own stubbornness could be delaying your destiny. But I, I've learned Ephesians 4.28. I'm living by my giving. Giving destroys greed and selfishness. Never marry a selfish person. You don't want no Lord, no, oh no, oh no, oh no. This is not the time, listen to me saints, this is not the time to draw back or to scale back on your giving. The Bible talks about 1 Timothy 6, 19, jot it down, talks about you, you can give a security seed. Uh, it talks about storing up for themselves a good found foundation for the time to come. Don't know how long this gonna last. But I got some, I got seed in the ground! You can't make a demand on unsown seed. But when you got some seed in the ground, there's a confidence. When the world gets darker, the church will be brighter if we do it God's way. If we live by design and not default. Successful people live life on purpose. The Bible talks about, go to Jeremiah 22. The Bible talks about seed time and harvest time. You can't have no harvest time without some seed time. Listen to me, saints. It may not be popular. And what, and, what, and what people don't understand, you know, what they're not up on, they're down on. We tend to criticize what we don't understand. Amen. No, you can't buy the favor of God. You cannot buy the favor of God. That's not what we're saying. I'm saying that God in his sovereignty designed the system to prosper his people. And Anita, this system will work for anybody, anywhere. But God's system is to have, I must give. Yeah, that's Proverbs 11, verse 24 and 25. There is one who scatters or gives, yet increases. The person who scatters will increase. And verse 25, Proverbs 11 says, the generous soul will be made rich. Giving causes receiving. In Luke 6, 38, Jesus said, sowers are sure to have a seed. Whatever, whatever you give up for the kingdom of God's sake, God will cause it to be multiplied back to you. That's Luke 18, 28 through 30. Harvest only responds to seed. If you're not a sower, you're not entitled to harvest. Because harvest follows seed, not need. God, is, I learned this, God's not moved by need. Mm -mm, you can have a need all day long. You can cry crocodile tears. It may get his attention, but he ain't moving. Uh-uh. God's not moved by need. God's moved by seed. Listen at this. I determine my income by the seed I sow. Galatians 6 and 7 says a man's harvest in life depends entirely on what he sows. In Genesis 1, 26, God gave his man Adam two gifts. He gave him dominion in Genesis 1, 26. And in Genesis 1, 29, he gave him seed. But God won't sow your seed for you. You got to give to live, sow to flow and cast the land. They talking about recession. They talking about all kinds of stuff. I refuse to participate in any recession. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody I'm not participating in. I'm not. Where I tell y'all to go? Jeremiah. Jeremiah 22. Listen at this. The purpose of prosperity. Ephesians 6 and 8 says, 
knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord. Whatever I make happen for, for the kingdom of God, God will make happen for me. Because I'm making it happen for him, God will make it happen for me. The same in like return. Yes, Ephesians 6 and 8. You want your bills paid? Help God or somebody else pay theirs. I know it don't make sense, but I'm telling you, I'm working for a giving, not a living. Ephesians 4, 28. To have resources that God wants to bless you to be a blessing. Now listen to me. To have resources. He wants you to have resources to help others out. He wants you to be in a position where you believe in to help somebody else. Don't ever say, Lord, I just, I don't want much in life. I just want to be comfortable. Bless me, my, my wife, my two children. Bless us four and no more. That is so selfish. That's very selfish. God wants us to be in a position to be able to help people. Yeah. I prayed to pray years ago, Lord, make me the man. Because God is not a counterfeiter. He's going to use people. Now, write this statement down. God, it's Jeremiah 22. God expects us to help the poor. We, doing, we, we feed every week. We adopted a school. But we're finding out we're going to step it up during this time. I'm talking about we reach, my wife and we reach in our pocket help folk off. I, that's not a week go by. We got a call the other day. They, don't, they ain't even, they not even a part of this church. They in another city. Found out they were a little short. They needed some groceries. Boom. We help them. Look, I'm talking about personally, but you got to be in a position to help people and give to people. Amen. Heard another pastor was going through some stuff during this time. Boom. We give. Listen to me, but you got to have it. The best way to help the poor is not to be one of them. And God expects you. God, ex God is concerned about poor people. There's a ministry to the poor and you have to have that desire. Jeremiah 22. Look at verse 16. Jeremiah 22. What? 16. Jeremiah 22, 16. When you have it, say amen. He judged the cause of who? The poor. Underline that. And needy. Then it was well. Was not this knowing me, says the Lord? Yet your eyes and your heart are for nothing but, but your own, your covetous for shedding an innocent blood and practicing oppression and violence. Listen, God says, it's not this that, this is what it means to know me. You got a heart. To be a blessing. They know my character. They're demonstrating my heart, God says, because my heart is to help people and be a blessing to others. Go to Leviticus 19 quickly. Leviticus 19. In 2017, over 49 million Americans in the wealthiest city in the world and country in the world were in poverty. I, I quoted one time 3.6 million people with bachelor's degrees are living in poverty in America. Last time, when the, when the last government shutdown came, they found out that between 40 to 60 percent of people are living from payday to payday. They can't miss a check. 25,000 people in the world die every single day of hunger around the world. A lot of people are struggling. And we got to answer. God is concerned about people. He loves people. But I'm telling you, you he ain't going to cut you no deal. You ain't going to get no discount. I'm a minister. I don't get no discount. I got a tithe. I got to give. The Bible says, uh, jot it down in Exodus 30, verse 15, that the rich and poor must give. Yeah. If you, if you don't have, then you're going to really need to give. And you just got to start where you're at. I don't care. You, the woman started with two mites in Mark, Mark chapter 12, verse 41 and, and, and 42. Don't ever discount your little bit. Amen. Amen. You got to start where you are and start trusting God. And you can't worry and trust God at the same time. Tell somebody, don't worry about nothing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You may have to yell it because y'all kind of far away from each other. Okay, look at Leviticus, Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. Hold your place in Leviticus 19 for sake of time. Go to Proverbs 19. Go to Proverbs 19. But Leviticus 19, verse 9 and 10 and verse 9, 15 lets us know that God is concerned about the poor. But for sake of time, go to Proverbs 19. Proverbs, Proverbs 19. I confess, according to 2 Corinthians 9, 10, I have an abundance of seed to sow. I confess, according to 1 Timothy 6, 18, I'm using money to do good works in the earth. Amen. 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 I'm not backing down. I'm not scaling back. I'm not drawing back. I know what to do. 
And I understand any man or woman of God that preaches what the Bible talks about, or preaches or teaches biblical prosperity, will be called by some a con artist, charlatan, crook, hustler, pimp. Don't make me no difference. I'm concerned about your prosperity, and I know what God said, and I know God's way works. I said it works. Amen. Amen. Are y'all there in Proverbs 19? Write this statement down. Here it is, Michelle. God rewards those who help the poor. God rewards those who help the poor. Proverbs 19 and 17. Proverbs 19 and what? And 17. Proverbs 19. God rewards those who help the poor. Not just pray for folk, but go in your own pocket. Okay, okay, see. See, God wants you in a position where you... You don't spend hardly no time praying up for yourself. You believe you receive a car, a house, cash, cribs, cars, clothes, you know, and then you move on. You don't, you don't, you, your whole, when you wake up in the morning, it's all about you being a blessing. Proverbs what? 1917. Proverbs 1917. He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord and he will what? The Lord will pay back what he has given. A gift to the poor is a loan to God, and God promises to pay me back. Amen. No loan will go outstanding. God keeps good books. Go to Proverbs 28, and I'm closing. Proverbs 28, 27. Over 7 billion people on planet Earth. God wants to use you to help folk. Amen. Seed sown properly gives you access to divine interest. God will pay you back. He keeps good books. All right? Proverbs 28, 27. I will always be, I'll never be broke another day in my life. Why? Because, watch this, Proverbs 28, 27, I'm in a shall not lack position. I'll always have more than enough. I'll always have more than enough. Because of this, what I'm about to read you, Proverbs 28, 27. 28, 27. 28, 27, he who gives to the poor, what? I believe that. Will not lack. But he who hides his eyes will have many curses. I'll always have something. If you want to always have something, in between the 15th and the 30th, if you're still all right, always be a giver. Money cometh after you giveth. I'm always believing for more seed to sow so I can have more money to give. Amen. He who gives to the poor will not lack. I claim that for me. I claim that for you. Big givers are big livers. There once was a man, some called him mad, but the more he gave, the more he had. And then the song says you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. And just as sure as you are living and the Lord is in heaven on high, the more you give, the more he gives to you. But keep on giving because it's really true that you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. Every head bow, every eye closed, nobody leaving, nobody moving. We're going to pray. Heavenly Father, right now, I'm asking that you seal this word in the heart of your people. Seal it so the devil won't steal it. In Jesus' name. You're here, and, and by strength.